go ahead and start sharing my screen. Hopefully you guys can see my screen. Carol, thumbs up. Okay. Give it just another minute or two um, before we before we get started. Thumbs up, sir. Thumbs up. You get a few of them, Katie. Okay, perfect. Thank you. That's what I'd like to see. Thumbs up. Well, that's just fun. That is really fun. I don't know if everybody can see that, but it's and a heart. Wow, you guys have made my day. Doesn't take much. <laughs> you guys are too much. <laughs> All right, we. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we've got a good good audience here. Um, welcome everyone to our iPad POS troubleshooting uh, webinar today. We're so glad to have you. My name is Katie Campbell. I am with the learning and education team. Um, and uh, we are going to hopefully have a great webinar for you today. I think you'll I think you'll like what we have in store for you. Um, today, we are going to walk you through um, some basic troubleshooting. Um, we'll, you'll, by the end of this, you'll be able to determine whether you're on Apple Ethernet Connect. We've got that abbreviated here as AEC um, or Wi-Fi. So um, if, if you don't know how to do that, hopefully by the end of that, you'll, you'll know how to do that. Um, we'll also, um, like I said, do some basic troubleshooting, best practices, um, and then we will also hopefully have time at the end to answer some questions. So if you aren't familiar with Zoom, hopefully everybody's used it at this point. But um, if not, we do have a Q&A area uh, there in the Zoom panel. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to throw those in there and we will monitor those and um, hopefully answer them as we go. But if not, um, we'll have, like I said, time at the end for uh, Q&A. We do have a great speaker today uh, that will be delivering the message, huh, the message, the webinar. Um, we've also got a couple of other panelists with us today that will be kind of monitoring the questions with me. Don't wanna leave those out. Michelogius and Jenny are, are hanging out here with us as well. Um, but Carol Guido is our senior manager of technical support. She's been with Revel for seven years. Um, she's a great asset to, uh, she's not on the learning and education team, but she helps us out a lot. And so we have uh, tagged her to do this webinar for us today. Um, if she looks familiar, uh, maybe she is because she has maybe come to your establishment to train you. She travels around a lot to uh, meet with some of our clients. So she really is our Revel expert and uh, no one better could deliver this for us today. So without further ado, um, I will pass this off to Carol and let you take it away. Thank you, Katie. Uh, I hope everybody's having a, a great day today. And uh, thank you for, for joining our POS uh, Connection Troubleshooting webinar. So I, I like thumbs up too. So I hope everybody can uh, also see my iPad screen. There we go, awesome. Sharing some of the love. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the settings of the iPad. That's the first thing we're gonna check, right? Cause there's two different ways that you can have your POS station uh, connected with, which is either through Wi-Fi or the ethernet connection. So I'm gonna click on the settings of my iPad and on the left-hand side, you can see that I have a Wi-Fi section and I have an Ethernet section. Currently, I have my Wi-Fi off, which, and I have the Ethernet section, which indicates to me for troubleshooting that I have an Apple Ethernet connection. So my iPad is hardwired with that Apple Ethernet connection. Uh, if it was not connected properly, I would not see that Ethernet section uh, in my settings. So right now I know that it's connected and I have um, internet access through that connection. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to tap on the ethernet section 
And then it brings me up to the Apple uh, USB Ethernet adapter. I'm going to give that one more tap on my iPad. And I'm going to see the settings that are currently in there. So one of our best practices um, is the first setting that you see is the limit IP address tracking. Uh, we would prefer if you would have that uh, disabled. So in order to do that, you just simply tap on it and toggle it off and leave that setting off. Next section, you're gonna see the IP address. So currently my IP address is configured to automatic, which is not how we want our, our iPad set up. We would prefer them to be set to a manual static IP address. So if I see it automatic, that's also a red flag and I would automatically wanna go in there and change that setting. Being set to automatic means that the IP address can change um, at usually you have a, a set time where it will re, uh, renew and release, release and renew. Um, so we don't, we would prefer it to be set to the same IP address all the time. So to set it to manual, I'm gonna tap on the part where it says configure IP automatic and I'm going to set it to manual, then it's gonna give me the area to type in my IP address. So right now I'm going to type in my IP address. And if some of you are familiar with our IP address schemes, you're gonna realize, oops, forgot a dot. You're gonna notice that mine is not configured exactly the same way a Rebel network should be. Um, for purposes for the webinar, I need to, to have my iPad to be able to share it on, on the screen here in the webinar on my home network. Otherwise, if I was on the Rebel network, you probably would only hear every other word that came out of my mouth. So it's similar, but it's going to be different. So we're going to set, I'm going to type in the IP address. So what I had for my IP address was 192.168.1.222. The subnet mask is going to be 255.255.255.0. And then I'm going to set up the router, which is going to be 192.168.1.1. So in the Rebel world, it would be 192.168.22.1.1. For the router. And if I was using an Apple Ethernet Connect, my IP address should be 192.168.22.71. I have multiple um, POS stations that are running um, on Ethernet Connect. They would have the next IP address of 72, 73, and so on. So once I have this set to what I want it to, I'm going to click uh, Save up above and now I have set my IP address to a manual IP address. That means that this should not change this IP address, which should also match the IP address that's set in the management console. This should not change unless somebody um, manually goes in there and makes a change. The next thing that we wanna look at, at our, in our set is the, the DNS settings. We also want those set to be manual, which I have set up already. Um, so I'm gonna just tap on where it says manual on configure DNS. And I have those set up manually already. And these are the DNS servers that we would prefer that you have your iPad set up to. If they were set up to automatic, it would be the same steps that you would see. They would be, they would be blank in here and then we would click add server and then we would add these, these two DNS servers, the 8.8.8.8 and the 8.8.4.4. Once we have that, if we had to set them manually, we would hit save once again, and then we should be good to go. So now I just back out of here and I go back to um, our settings. This is what our, our IP address manually should look up if we're on ethernet. Okay, so if we weren't on Ethernet and we were running on Wi-Fi, then we would go into the Wi-Fi settings. So I just click on that. I toggle this Wi-Fi setting is off. 
I toggle it on and then I can determine and see what Wi-Fi network that I'm on. Majority of the time, all Revel network SSIDs start with the three letters REV, three, the word REV or three letters REV. That's going to be the first three letters in your Revel network. And it's usually REV and whatever your business name is. So if it, for me, it would be Rev Support Lab, that would be a traditional SSID for uh, a Wi-Fi network. So once I turn this on, you can see by the check mark that I am connected to a Revel network called the Support Lab. To be able to go in and see what my IP address is for that Wi-Fi network, I would click on the blue eye in the circle and that's gonna bring me to this uh, similar settings that we have um, for the ethernet. Down below, once again, limit IP address, IP address tracking. We want to have that um, turned off. So we'll, we would disable that. And as you can see here, I already have my Wi-Fi settings set up manually. And this is similar to what you would see on a Rebel network. So the first uh, POS station is usually traditionally going to be 192.168.22.111. And then going forward, the more POS stations you have, uh, 112, 113, and so on. This is the, I, uh, the subnet mask is the same, 255.255.255.0. And then the router, 182.168.22.1. Same thing um, with the, the DNS, we want those set manually, same DNS uh, settings. Now, if I knew that I, was, I had Apple Ethernet Connect and I came into my settings and I see right here on the left-hand side that I have the Ethernet option and I also see a Wi-Fi name in there, that indicates to me that I have both Wi-Fi enabled and Ethernet connected, and we do not want you to have uh, Wi-Fi connected if you're running um, Ethernet and you're hardwired to a switch or a router on the Rebel network. So that would be um, a red flag to go in and go into Wi-Fi and disable it because you will have two different IP addresses and um, the rest of the devices on the network will be confused as to what IP address to communicate um, in the net on the Rebel network. So I would come in to Wi-Fi because I see it on and I have Ethernet and I would disable the Wi-Fi so that I'm only running the Ethernet connect. So now we can go into some um, troubleshooting steps for the ethernet, but before we do that, I would um, like you guys to see what the, uh, the actual ethernet uh, adapter looks like if you don't currently have one, um, so that you get a better idea of what we're talking about. So you guys get a little visual of what the um, ethernet adapter looks like. This is a picture of what you would see. So you're gonna have the dongle, the ethernet dongle, that's going to, that can be in white. You can have it in, in, a, in black. It, this one is one of the original ones that we had. That's gonna be connected directly to your iPad. And then off the iPad, there's gonna be a USB to ethernet adapter. And then you're going to have the power supply and then the power brick. Super important that you make sure that you have a correct power brick for the uh, ethernet adapter, because um, that, this device will, will need to be powered by this correct adapter uh, power brick. And then this uh, ethernet cable will go um, directly into a switch or your router, most likely a switch at the POS station. So that connected together is going to give you that option on, on the iPad of the ethernet. So if I went in there and and I didn't see that, that ethernet option, then I'm gonna start troubleshooting 
the ethernet connection and I'm gonna make sure that all these cables are connected properly, right? I might want to unplug this and plug it back in to make sure it's seated in there properly. I'm gonna to wanna to check the connections here, make sure they're in properly. I would wanna check the power brick and make sure that it's, it's the right one. And then um, I wanna make sure that everything's connected properly with the USB to ethernet adapter. So those are some things that you're that you're going to want to check and make sure that those are those are connected properly. Okay, so some other things on the iPad that we're going to want to check. Just give me a second while we flip back to my iPad. Okay, so like I said, if for any reason the Apple Ethernet Connect was not fully connected properly you would not see the option right here of ethernet. It would, it would disappear. I would unplug it right now to show you what it would look like, but then I'll lose my internet connection and you won't be able to, we wouldn't be able to any, any longer see my screen. So a couple other things that we wanna check um, are, we, there's a couple settings in under the POS, under general, and then I'm going to I'm going to go to the Rebel POS uh, app under app section, and a couple of settings that could could cause issues or syncing issues is this local um, network setting. You want to ensure that that is toggled on so that everything in the local uh, Rebel network can communicate with each other. And then another setting that you want to go into is you want to click on to notifications and you also want to um, make sure that allow notifications is enabled also. So just a, a couple other settings in the POS for you guys to check out and look for. Okay, so there's going to be there could be some possible um, messages that you might see on your POS station. So I'm gonna launch um, my Rebel POS app. So if you notice right at the bottom where it's, uh, there's a red bar that's flashing at the bottom of my screen that says printer and card swipes will not work unless you connect to the correct Rebel wireless network. So, I'm seeing that message on my iPad because my iPad is not on a Rebel network. It's not on that that subnet that subnet that should be on. So it's not on 192.168.22 and then the IP address should be 71. So right off the bat Rebel the app says, "Oh, you're not on the same network as the rest of my devices. You're not on the same local area network as the rest of my devices. And it gives you that red warning at the bottom. So right off the bat, I will go in and I would check, go back to my settings and see what my settings are. I know they're wrong because I'm on my local um, Wi-Fi. So I know that's why I'm getting that message. Another possible message that you could get is if you're in a syncing environment and you have your main POS station and you have um, child stations, other POS stations that are syncing with the main, you could possibly get another red bar at the bottom that says um, cannot communicate with the main. So in that, in that case, you wanna go and check first to make sure that the main POS station um, has the right IP address that it says that's in, in, in your management console. You want to do all the same steps. You want to make sure that it's on a Rebel network or the, ether, or the Ethernet connection is on that same Rebel network. You're going to want to go in and check all that. And then you want to check also that the ch child stations are the same. I'm also going to log in to my um, app here. updating so we'll continue to, to talk about some other messages that you might see. Um, another um, message that you might get is you might get a message that says cannot contact server 
to update uh, configurations, please try again in a few minutes. That also could mean that you might, maybe your ethernet connection is not connected properly, that you you could possibly be having um, an issue with, with your uh, Wi-Fi connection. Um, so you just want to check your ethernet connection. You want to check your Wi-Fi, make sure that you have internet access and that you um, are on a network and then refresh your POS station and try again. Okay, uh, give me a second. We're seeing some troubleshooting in action right now. Action, yeah. <laughs> Apparently my app was working fine for all the run-throughs, but doesn't wanna cooperate today. Wow. So it's downloading some information from my management console. Once again, my red bar at the bottom popped up and uh, is telling me that I'm not going to be able to communicate with any of my peripherals. So my card swipe, my printers, scanners, anything like that will not work. Um, well, while we're waiting, while we're waiting for that, I was going to go over some best practices to see yeah. if if I can log into into um, the app here. So some of the best practices especially if you're in a syncing environment um, and you have multiple stations is you should always keep the POS app open um, on this screen, right? So if you have the main, you have multiple stations, you have order, if you have mobile order takers, any kind of additional POS stations, they should always stay on this app, even if, even if they're not in use, okay? Um, it'll just make your life life easier. Um, they'll stay in communication with each other and you won't have any syncing issues or have to refresh if you're not able to see uh, any of the POS stations. So that's a best practice. Uh, if you are, if you noticed when I went into the settings and I went into the wireless settings, when I went into Wi-Fi, you saw a bunch of other networks that I had already connected it to in there. Some of them were my home networks. So you can go in and forget those networks um, so that your iPad doesn't have a chance to uh, connect to any other network than the Rebel network. So that's another um, best practice to go in there and forget get your network so that you know either your staff or anybody in your in your establishment can't go in and connect to any other network. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you should only be using one or the other option. You should only be either using Wi-Fi or Ethernet. You should not have both of those um, enabled at the same time. Another best practice is there is a setting, there we go, uh, a setting to disable automatic downloads. So that is a setting that you wanna go in and toggle that off. Uh, you can find that in the iPad settings um, under general. You wanna make sure that's toggled off so that none of your stations actually um, update to a different version, right? Because we have three major releases a year, but then we also have incremental versions. And if one of your stations accidentally got updated because you had automatic downloads um, or updates turned on, then you would have a mismatch of versions. And then you would either have to downgrade one of your uh, app, apps um, or update all of them. And if that happens during the course of business, that's it's it's not a good thing if your POS stations are down. So you want to have that setting turned off. So we were finally able to log in. So one of the things that I wanted to show you in the POS was um, I clicked on settings at the bottom right hand corner, and I can click on stations up here, and then I could see what station is the main. Right. So 
right now I only have one POS uh, station uh, connected. This is my main. If for some reason there was an issue and it wasn't set to main, then I would have an option here to set it to main. Then I would go in and refresh all my other child POS stations for them to be able to see them. If I'm in a syncing environment and I have multiple POS stations or maybe some mobile order takers, in this section here, I should see all of those stations listed. If I don't, then that gives me um, an indication that there's something going on and maybe those POS stations are not on, on um, the main screen, that login screen that I showed you, or maybe they're on a different network. So now I'm gonna wanna go check those and see what's going on as to why I don't see them in here in the main. Uh, right now, just for um, our troubleshooting purposes, this setting, because I know I'm not on the Rebel network, I can uh, go into network sync and I can disable this and toggle this off just so I can remove the red bar uh, at the bottom, just so we could see all of the uh, iPad screen. Okay, so another best practice, um, our current version uh, of our POS app is uh, designed for iOS 16. That's just been released um, this past month. So um, we usually have two versions of our app in the app store, whatever our current version is, which is currently 276. And then we will have a legacy version, which is the prior version. Uh, usually um, when our first version comes out in March is when we will be um, fully um, designated to be with the latest iOS, which is currently iOS 16. So if that's fully, um, lost my train of thought there. <laughs> Compatible, that was the word I was thinking of. So, um, I know we covered a lot of information in a short amount of time. Um, I hope that uh, this was helpful information. Uh, we have some questions that, that maybe we didn't cover, Katie, that we could go over. We do. Um, Jenny's been answering some of them. So I think um, every all the attendees should be able to see the questions that we've answered so far. Um, let me see what questions are still open. Um, see, dongle to. I have. A, oh, you have do you have access to the questions? No, there. I was going to say I had a question for you, Katie. Oh, after after our webinar is all over, this will be about this webinar will be is being recorded and will be available right for everybody to review. Absolutely. Yes, we um, it'll take a little bit of time to render and upload and uh, you'll get a copy of it sent out. Everybody that's registered will send the, the recording out. So, um, yes, absolutely. OK. Let me know if there's any other questions um, that anybody has. Somebody asked, I see the dongle to split the connections and then another converter between the ethernet and the splitter. What's that called exactly? Let me go back to share my screen and pull up that image and maybe sure. let's talk through that again. Um, okay, so, so this... So this is the the adapter. Um, some might call it a camera adapter, but this is the adapter. This part connects directly to where you would traditionally, as a lightning, where you would traditionally have your power supply. And then on the end of it, it has a USB connection. And then this is a lightning connection. So this USB, this is a USB to ethernet adapter where you have your ethernet cable that is going to have it go directly to your switch or router. And then this connection here is your power supply. So that's your power cable that's connected to your power brick. So this is supplying the power to the adapter. And then the adapter connects directly to where you would normally have 
your pa your power adapter lightning cable plugged into. I hope that helps explain it a little bit better. Someone asked, are the um, Ethernet adapters locked or registered to specific MAC addresses, or are they used interchangeably between equipment? They are not locked to specific MAC addresses. We prefer that they are set statically to a manual IP address but they are not locked to a specific MAC address. I'm sure if you wanted to lock it down, correct me if I'm wrong with the lawyers, you could by setting MAC addresses on your router. Uh, yes, so the only way to do it would be, as Carol mentioned, to set it up on the router, but we don't pre-configure the ethernet adapters to work with any specific MAC addresses. So they would work if you connected one Ethernet adapter to another iPad. Um, somebody asked, I assume that if a Revel technician is doing an install at a store, that all of the equipment would be configured as you discussed today. Are there any reasons that anything would be changed from what you discussed today? Now, the only thing, um, it should all be configured as it is today. We also have standard IP address ranges like that we like to use for, if you notice when I was talking about Wi-Fi for the first POS station, the last three octets of the IP would be for the first POS station 111. And when I talked about the Ethernet Connect, it would be 71. Um, we like to keep everything for that's any POS stations that are connected through um, Ethernet Connect. Uh, the IP addresses start with 71 and so on and Wi-Fi 111 and then so on. And the reason for that is it helps if you ever have to call into support for troubleshooting reasons, right? So if if you can tell me that your IP address is 71 or 72, I'm going to automatically know that you should be on Apple Ethernet Connect, and I'm going to do some different troubleshooting than I would if you were on Wi-Fi, right? If you told me it was 111, then I would do different steps. So yes, when somebody comes to do a Rebel install, they should have every everything set up the way we discussed today. Unless, of course, there was um, a situation where you were running on a custom network, kind of, you know, the example of my home network, where you were running a different um, subnet mask, then it, your IP ranges should be would be different. But that would also be um, a troubleshooting step. If I came into the iPad and I saw my IP address was not in the Rebel range of 192.168.22, and one of the appropriate um, IP addresses, I would that would be a flag to me to be like, oh, I'm not on a Rebel network. Let me go see what's going on. Um, you mentioned that they folks need to make sure that they're using the appropriate power brick when charging their iPads. Um, can you specify how they would know what power brick to use? Uh, Michaeloyes, can you help me out with on that one? I believe it says it on the power brick, and I forget which exact voltage is is needed. So yeah, we we if you got the power brick from us uh, with uh, Ethernet adapter, it would have the correct uh, wattage. Um, I can look it up which uh, which device has which wattage requirements and get back to you. Yeah, so an iPad. So you were you were looking at my screen. An iPad Pro with the bigger screen has a different wattage as opposed to a standard iPad. So they would be two different ones of of what power it would need but we'll get that for you. What does the TP-Link do and how should it be wired? Just talk a little bit maybe about that. So the TP-Link is our router, right? So 
that's the Rebel router, which should be connected directly to your ISP modem. So whatever internet that you have coming into your business, you're going to have the Rebel router, and that's going to be the point where you're going to get internet from your ISP modem to the Rebel router. And then everything else on the Rebel network has to be connected to the Rebel router for it to be a local area network. So if you have access points, they need to be connected to the Rebel router. And then any POS stations, they need to be connected to the Rebel router, whether it's directly or more likely through a switch. So you would have a switch connected to the Rebel router. And then that switch would be um, at like the designated POS station, which gives you just the ability to have more devices connected into the network. Um, somebody asked, can you have a POS not in the same building sync orders? That would be difficult. If unless it depends on how far away it is, right? So it's if it's outside and you have an outside access point that's on the same network, then technically yes. But it depends on what your setup is and how how you're configured. If it is not in the same area, then you would probably want that. Um, iPad to be on it, it like uh, in a local sync environment um, until you were able to maybe get it back to where the Rebel network is to get it to, to sync the orders to the main. Okay. Um, Sorry, I'm just. Um trying to read through some of these some of them are not not some of them are very specific so for those of you if you have a very specific situation um you know you may have to reach out to support for some of your really specific um questions um Or if they have a specific question, if they want to follow it up with their email address, maybe we can have support, send them an email and follow up on it. That's that's a great suggestion. Yeah. So if any of you, like Carol said, just um, if you have the ability to reply to your initial question or edit your initial question, I'm not sure. Um, I can't. Or if you... Or if we cannot answer all your questions during this webinar, you can just email support at Rebel Systems and the technical support team will answer those questions for you. Um, someone says, so if my IP address is um, not correct, they're, they're providing a specific IP address, do I just manually change it? Yes. You should set it to what your IP address is indicated on your management console. So if mine was set incorrectly, um, as you saw from my screen, it was 192.168.1.222. I should go in and manually change that to 192.168.22.71. If that's the IP that, that's indicated on my management console for that POS station, save it, refresh, my POS and refresh if I have any child station so that they are able to now see that new IP address. Okay, Revel provides a Wi-Fi access point along with the switches. Um, I thought that providing both was to provide provide a failover network if the wired network goes down. So are you suggesting that if the wired network goes down, that staff manually toggle Wi-Fi on? Yes. So that you have to manually turn. Yes, you should. If you're, if 
for some reason, something happened with your adapter. It, you know, was not working properly or was malfunctioning, then yes, you should go in, disconnect that, and then go in and it toggle on Wi-Fi and make sure it's on the Revel network that, that is configured through your access point. So the Rev, whatever your business name is, that would be your SSID. You would connect to that. You're going to make sure that you set it up to a manual IP address, the same one, uh, if, depending on which POS station it is. One would be 111, POS2 would be 112, and so on. You're going to want to set that up manually and have that on. Once you disconnect the, the Apple Ethernet, the hardware, you'll, you'll no longer see that Ethernet connection in, in the settings on your iPad, and then you'll be strictly on Wi-Fi. Okay. Um, someone says that they're using a third party vendor for, um, their networking. And so it makes it hard when they're calling support to troubleshoot issues. Um, do you have any best practices or suggestions for what they can do, um, for kind of, you know, speaking the same language? between the two since there may not be common IP addresses or um I would say the first thing is um when you do call support maybe identify that you're using a third party and a custom network um if you're aware of that uh and if if ever possible if you can get that third party involved on the the phone call um, that would be helpful, but identifying that you right off the bat that you are using a custom network and the third party will probably um, help eliminate some troubleshooting steps off the bat. Um, this is not entirely on topic, but maybe you can offer some suggestions on troubleshooting issues between the POS and credit card readers. So that's going to be some somewhat similar, um, just making sure that um, you're on the same network, right? That you're, if your POS station is not on the Revel network, as you saw with that red bar at the bottom, you'll get that. Another best practice is to not, like I said, do not get off the Revel login screen. Every time you minimize the app, you could potentially lose connection to that card swipe. So when you bring the app back up, it needs to, to look for the IP address and establish that connection again. So in the local area network, everything communicates through those IP addresses. So if you minimize the app or you know unplug the card swipe or whatever, once you bring the app up or the card swipe comes, you power it back on, it has to find that device that it needs to communicate and establish that connection to. So that could be some uh, troubleshooting steps and make sure that the IP address that is on the iPad is what's in the management console. And you might wanna just check, usually when we send card swipes out, we put a sticker on of what the IP address is. You just wanna make sure that that's the same that's um, in the settings of the card swipe on the POS and that card swipe is assigned to the POS station. Heard that again, kind of some duplicates I'm trying to sift through too. Um, when you refer to stations, are you including KDSs when you talk about stations? No, a KDS is a kitchen display um that's not a station so the uh, the the kitchen displays need to be on obviously the same rebel network uh they have their own ip addresses set in the management console they should also be set manually uh and they need to be on the same major release version that the ipads are on but with KDS stations, their kitchen displays, they act as a monitor a, or similar to a kitchen printer. They're not assigned to specific POS stations. Products that you want to go to them are assigned to them. 
So they're not really, they're syncing, but they're not really syncing with POS stations. They just need to be on the same network. They need to be on the same major version as the POS apps. And uh, they should also be have uh, manual IP address, static IP addresses set. Okay. And I assume uh, kind of similar questions we're getting with printers as well. Same same troubleshooting steps. Yeah. You want to make sure that the it, it's going to could lose communication because the, the iPad jumped off of the, of the, of the uh, rebel network. So also some, some things to prevent things like that from happening or prevent your settings from getting changed or from your staff from toggling on um, Wi-Fi or minimizing the Revel app to maybe go on some social media or look look something up on Google or whatever is you have two options. Uh, the iPad itself, the iOS has what we call guided access built into it. Uh, you can enable guided access in the settings of the iPad. It requires a passcode. And then once you enable it and set the passcode, it locks it onto that Rebel screen so that you can't get out of it. Okay. You can't hit the home button or whatever and get out of the Rebel screen. If you are, um, if your devices are managed through our Rebel Guard XT, our MDM, there's an option within that called single app mode, which also locks the iPad down to just the Rebel POS app so you cannot get out of it, right? So that's going to prevent your staff from minimizing the apps, uh, which can cause syncing issues be between stations and also helps prevent them from getting onto a different network or enabling Wi-Fi or anything like that. It's also great for locking your kids into a certain A app. single, okay. <laughs> um, is it best to turn your station off each night or enable automatic downloads if you have only one station? No, no to both. I would not turn the station off ever. Um, I would not put my, my iPads to sleep, have them anything like that, nor, um, have automatic downloads you enabled. Want it, you want it open on the pen pad screen, right? Correct. And At that. all times. If, if, I mean, if you wanted to, you could like minimize the brightness. Um, but I would not leave, I would not take it off of even. Even if it's like mobile order takers and you're, they're not in use and you're just charging them in another section, I would always leave them on the Rebel login screen. Okay, um, a couple issues about um, like charging iPads and things like that. Um, like if no micro lights are on the ethernet adapter, no data connections, does this indicate a bad ethernet adapter? Um, if the POS is getting a charge from the, the adapter, should this be replaced? It sounds like, um, yeah, the wording of that is a little confusing, but I think like maybe a light is on on the adapter or on the port, but it's may, maybe, maybe you need a new cable, maybe you need a new charger, you know, a, a, a power brick. Um, I would say you would, I would say you would do some basic troubleshooting. Maybe you would first swap out the ethernet cable, make sure the cable's not bad, or maybe change it to a different port on your switch. Um, and also, like Katie said, check the, um, uh, power brick and make sure it's it has the right right wattage or then it could be the adapter and then if you have a different adapter you could possibly a, a good thing to do is also switch it so switch the adapter to another PO West station that you know is worth adapt if the issue stays with the adapter it's possibly the Okay. 
Um, maybe do Three just, chapters. maybe just one or two more. Um, you kind of, you touched on this during the webinar, but maybe just reiterate, how should we be handling iOS updates manually or let the iPad automatically update? Same question for Revel app updates. So you should not have either iOS updates or Revel POS app updates or set to automatic. You want to determine when you want to do both of those, right? So uh, 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 let's go with iOS updates. Uh, it's up to you when you want to update your iOS. We only technically support two versions of what iOS versions are out there from Apple. So right now it's 16 and 15. Um, but six, with that being said, 16 came out um, in October and we just are fully um, approved on 16 with the latest version of Revel. So it's March now, 276. So that's why you don't wanna have uh, automatic iOS updates turned on. Because uh, if, if it was available back in October or November, you could have updated. Uh, you know, it wouldn't have been, you know, a huge issue, but we wouldn't have been fully certified on it until this past month. Um, and same for app updates, especially if you're in a syncing environment where the app version needs to be exactly the same on every POS station, uh, you want to wait um, and schedule that. And there's different ways that you can schedule it. You could, you know, call into support. Um, and ask us to walk you through updating it. If you're not currently enrolled in our Rebel Guard XT MDM, um, then there's the option with that, that we could schedule both iOS updates and POS app updates for those. We can schedule it remotely and have those done at certain times. If you're uh, utilizing that functionality. Um, with the guided access, um, someone says they experience slow charging on the device when they're using guided access. Have you encountered that? Is that, or maybe is there something wrong with their charging devices, charging brain? I, I haven't encountered that with guided access, but the two of the things that you could check is to make sure that you have the correct the correct power brick. A lot, a lot of times um, people go out and get like a third party one. That's probably not as effective as an Apple power brick. And another thing that you can help with that is if you change the brightness on your iPad, um, if your brightness is at 100%, uh, you might want to change that down to 50%. And that could help with um, the charging, uh, increase the charging speed on the iPad. Is there a Revel provided list of what iOS versions the app is certified on? Yes, I'm pretty confident you can find a KB article on that. Yeah, and our on our support, support.revel.com. Support .com. Yep. There. Um. Someone, this is kind of a specific question. Um, so we, you may have to, to call in about this or email support, but um, why do I get a set main to communicate with server? We talked about this error when everything is on the right network and IP address. Is there any other troubleshooting that we can do? Um, sometimes it just starts working on its own and I'm not sure what I did to fix it. Yeah, you could get that message if if um, the apps are being minimized, right? So if you're getting off the Rebel login screen on either the main or any child stations, you could possibly get that. So usually refreshing, if all the apps are on the on the um, the login screen, I would refresh the main first and then refresh any child stations. Um, after that, then it should usually um, take that away. If that doesn't work, the next thing I would do is to uh, uh, usually hit the home screen 
and swipe up and close the Rebel app. Then do that first on the main, then relaunch the main and then refresh and that should resolve the issue. Okay. Um, I think we will stop there um, with um, with just the time that we have, because I think some of the the last uh, questions would just bear a lot a lot more specific. So um, we do have all of the questions here. I will um, try to compile a list of all of the questions and kind of create a Q and A document that we can send out. Um, I'll also make sure that we, um, all the information that Carol delivered today, we also have um, online in an article on our support site. So I'll be sure to include that in the follow-up. And then this webinar was recorded. So you'll get a, a, a copy of the video as well. So, And then if you had a specific question, you, you don't want to give a call to support. It's support at rebelsystems.com that will automatically uh, create a ticket and someone from support agents will uh, reach back out to you guys. Yes, thanks for that. Um, and thank you so much, Carol, for um, delivering this today. I know it's super beneficial. Um, hopefully the attendees found it beneficial. We got to answer a lot of questions. So um, we really appreciate everybody joining us and thanks to Jenny and Nicolaus for um, helping with the questions as well. So thanks so much, everybody. Keep an eye out. Give us, um, give us a day or so to compile all the info and we'll send a follow-up email. Thanks so much. Have a Thank great you. day. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.